Hello everyone and welcome to this video that was voted for by Patreon members over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. So they voted for this month to look at how to use navigation invokers. So these are components you can add onto actors uh, that affect the navigation mesh. So let's take a look at how they're used and when's the best case use for them. So for our navigation invokers, let's first of all explain what they are. So the typical method for a nav or a AI is to create a nav mesh bounds volume. These are large volumes that you can scale over your map. However, nav invokers are a bit more efficient use of that because the problem with nav mesh bounds volume is you have to drag it across the whole entire map. And if you're dealing with quite a large world, that could be problematic because it's now got to generate lots of information when your navigation actor is not actually using much data at all. They only look at their local area. So a nav invoker is another way of having AI move around your environment. So to show you how you set this up, let's first of all create some AI. So I'm going to go into a bit of a class, character, AI character. And we're going to do a very, very simple AI that's just going to walk around. So let's go ahead and add a little mesh to this thing. And give it... Yeah, animation blueprint and I'm going to give it a very simple action to do I'm going to go into a custom move a custom event called move to uh, target and we have a very easy AI move to or want to be self and the destination it'd be a random location so I'm going to do random Point in uh, random, we'll do navigable. No, no, no reachable point. Get random reachable point and radius. Uh, the origin would be our access location. And the radius here will do 500 to start with. And when it's successful in doing that, we're just going to take it to move to target again. So we'll do move to target again. So it gets in a, a loop. And then begin play, we just start that loop off with a move to target. Okay, so very simple code. Now, at the moment, I don't have a nav mesh uh, volume in here. So if I just drag that into my scene, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, because there's no nav mesh for him to navigate. So a nav invoker is a component you add onto your characters or pawns. You go to add up here and type in invoke. And you'll see navigation invoker. And... There it is. And you can see here what it's going to generate around it. So what this does, it generates a nav mesh around the navigation invoker uh, at runtime. And you can choose the size of it and um, customize that to your liking. I'm going to change the tile generation now in a bit so we can see it working in the smaller space that we're dealing with here. So I'm going to go and do that as 1000 and we'll do 1200. Ideally, you want your removal radius to be slightly higher than your generation radius. Uh, with that done, we have to tell our game to use navigation focus. So I'm going to go into our project settings. And if you go down to the navigation mesh, I believe it is in. Uh, yep, yeah, let's just type it in. A bit easier. Invoke. And you'll see in here, it's a navigation system. So generate navigation only around navigation invokers. So you want that on. So I'm going to turn that on. Okay. And then we want to change the runtime generation of our navigation mesh. And you'll find that in there. Yeah, you'll see runtime generation is static. We're going to change that to dynamic. Uh, static means it's going to be generated before the game runs. Uh, so we don't need that because we want the mesh to generate whilst they're running around. Okay, so let's now put that into our scene and push play. Okay, and that's all good now we just need to add the nav mesh bounds volume now the difference between this now and the typical method is that the nav mesh bounds volume won't generate around the whole entire thing it will just generate around in focus that's, that's what should happen so let's take a look and put that into our scene here and yeah you can see it kind of working already i need to make the invoker a bit smaller but you can see how it's not generating over here. And that's because it's only generating around our nav invoker. 
So just to show you that a bit more, if I go to navigation invoker and turn this down to say 500, and removal will do 600. You now see it's a smaller space. Okay. And so that space around it is the only time the map mesh is actually going to generate. This makes it a little bit more performant, especially in more, much larger maps, because now rather than loading up the navigation mesh for everything, uh, this is now going to be just around it. So if I push play now, there you go, he's now moving around just fine. Okay, so let's tackle another problem that you have to deal with. So let's say we want him to come towards us. So for this, I'm going to make him a little bit slower, um, so, so it's easy to test. So we go down to his max full speed and do it 150. Um, by the way, his animation blueprint isn't working because by default they don't work with AI. You can fix that if you want. Just go into the animation blueprint. And you just want to find this section here on the event graph. And I should move, just turn it on. Or, or, or just plug in the ground speed one. You don't need anything else. Okay, um, yeah, so on the event graph here, rather than going to a random point, we're going to make him run towards us. So, destination, and we do get player character. Okay, compile, and go. So, I'm now going to run outside of the range of his navigation evoker. Now, notice how he has stopped moving. Now, the reason why he stopped moving is because he can no longer see me on the navigation mesh. Remember, the mesh is only valid around him. So if I get close enough to him, well, it's, it's, it's failed. It really didn't make it restart, but um, the navigation mesh uh, isn't there. So therefore, it hasn't generated it up for us. Okay, so you can see where it ends here. He's not going to cross that path. So the AI move to is failing. Um, over here is, is failing over here okay um so because of this you want to make sure that you're only really using invokers for very large maps and your character's invoker is, uh, is generating still quite large you probably change like back to three thousand would be fine um it would still be generating quite largely but if i would put in like multiple characters in here so if i put in another one you can see how the nav mesh has generated another one. Yeah. That means that the location is still valid, even if I go out of range of the other one at the back there. So I'm still in the range of this one here. Now I'm outside of range. So you can sort of like daisy chain characters together if they if they are relevant. Um but if they're no longer relevant and it will turn off, then that's fine. But so you want to use this for when you've got big, big maps. Um, if you had a very large map, like multiple miles wide, um, you don't want to generate a whole nav mesh like this. Okay, you, you want to use net invokers, so it only generates around the things that matter. And you can put invokers on anything. It doesn't have to be characters. You can put invokers on literally anything. So I could go into make like a signposting, for example. Um signpost and this could be a good way of making it so they follow pathing um because you can go into here and add an invoker and i'm going to put in a little visual aid for us uh, let's just do a, a cube there there you go one signpost um, a navigation evoker here will turn us down to, again, 500, 600. I'll place that in. And it doesn't have, doesn't have to be a visual thing, but you can put this on like roads, for example, and it will generate around the area. And so let me just take out the other guy. And let's just put a signpost up here. I'm just going to make it a bit, a bit smaller as well. Hold on. Uh, navigation focus and we'll do that EI 300 and 320 yeah something like that oh I duplicated the mesh whoops not that 
Let's just go on the actor. Bring that round here. Start him back there. Okay. And I'm going to put my character. I'll move this down a bit. So my character is going to start down here. Right. But, and so the quickest route for him would be to go, I've moved more obviously this, uh, no, not that way. Um, so the, the quickest route for him would be to, if it was a, a normal nav mesh, to go down around. But because he can't see that route there, when he first triggers, he's going to only see this route around the long way. He's going to tackle that route. Now, as he moves, though, the nav mesh evoker is going to update. So probably he's going to find this route. It might close the gap here. I don't know. We'll see that happening in a second. But as you can see, he's not taking the shortest path now. He's now following a route. Okay, so you can use nav invokers as sort of like, fake sort of roads that characters are going to follow along yeah there you go he uh, couldn't close the gap oh now he has <laughs> so he now found the way to me yeah once again if i leave here the nav mesh and there's nothing evoking around he won't come following me okay but there you go that's navigation invokers that's all they do um let's say best used for big open world maps very large maps um yeah so there you go that is navigation invokers so they're pretty simple um they just generate around them and for big maps and you can actually see this happening if you make a very large map and put in one single nav mesh bounds volume in it and drag it out to the final size you'll see it takes a long time for it to generate the nav mesh where navigation focus will make that a lot cleaner okay and rather than loading up a whole area it can just load up just what it needs and as you saw, you can also make some pretty clever uses out of them to make sort of pathing through an environment. So if you like this video and want to support me on further videos and want to cast your own vote for video content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your donation of just a few dollars will be access to all our videos early before anyone else, as well as the ability to vote on future content. Thanks to all the patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.